So, the first official recap of the 2024 MLB season. Now, with that said, let's start in Los Angeles as Shohei Otani made his Dodger Stadium debut. Now, the Dodgers' opening day starter was Tyler Glass now. He matched up against Miles Michaelis of the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, after Glass now scoreless first inning, the Dodgers' three-headed monster went to work as Betts walked in the first, and Otani collected his first Dodger Stadium hit as he shot a double down the right field line. A batter later, Freddie Freeman played at Betts to give the boys in blue a one to nothing lead. Just two batters later, Max Muncy, he drove in a run via sack fly. It was two to nothing Dodgers after just one inning. In the third, Betts let off the inning with a solo shot into the Dodger Stadium bullpen. Then two batters later, with Otani on base, Freeman sent a ball out to center field, making it a five-run Dodger advantage via the home run. Now the Cardinals avoided the shutout following a Goldie home run to left field in the fourth inning. However, LA would win seven to one behind six innings of one-run ball from Tyler Glass now. In game number two from Dodger Stadium, LA struck first once again. Now Betts, he provided the first run of the game via a solo shot. It was one nothing LA after just three pitches. Now off-season acquisition, Teoscar Hernandez. He was responsible for plating the next pair of Dodger runs as a center fielder shot a ball over the wall in right field in the second inning. Then in the fourth, he served up a home run the other way to left field. Now Miguel Rojas, he got in on the fun as well as he hit his first bomb of the season to left field. It was 6 to nothing LA after just seven full innings. Now the Redbirds did avoid the shutout thanks to a Nolan Gorman double that plated two in the top of the eighth. But LA prevailed once again 6-3 to three over the Redbirds in Chavez Ravine. Now the Mets, they took on the Brew Crew to start their 2024 MLB season at City Field. And let's just say this matchup did not disappoint. In game number one, Starling Marte got the parte started in Queens as he shot an inside fastball just over the orange line in left field to give the Mets an early 1-0 lead. The Brewers' top prospect, Jackson Churio, who signed an eight-year, $182 million deal, mind you, made an impressive snag, running back on a line drive off the bat of Brandon Nimmo, as you see here. He obviously misread it a little bit, or he just didn't get off and running in time. So, regardless, great, great play, and most importantly, recovery from Jackson Churio, the young rookie. Now, in the fourth inning, the Brewers returned the favor, as Christian Yelich got in on the fun, as he smacked the ball over the right field wall to tie the game up at one via his solo shot. And finally, the rookie, Churio, picked up his first MLB RBI, grounding into a fielder's choice in the seventh to make it 3-1 to one Milwaukee. However, the entertainment did not stop there, as this slide in the second base by Reese Hoskins really pissed off. Jeff McNeil for some reason. Now, I have no idea why he's bitching about this slide from Reese Hoskins. He clearly slid directly into second base. He did not go out of his way, so to speak, which clearly states in the rules a runner cannot go out of their way to take out a fielder. He did not do that. I mean, yeah, he slid hard into second base, which you can do. Yeah, did he slide a little bit late? Sure, but you know what? That's part of the game, dude. Like, what are you going to do about it? You, you can't because your team just sucked and shit the bet on opening day. I mean, think about this one for a second. What if he didn't slide? What if Reese Hoskins did not slide and just kept running? Wouldn't Jeff McNeil have the right to sling the ball in his face because he's in the line of the throw? I mean, as you're a runner, if you're out at second base by 10 feet or something, they typically veer off to the left or right out of the baseline so the fielder can make the play and make the throw to first base on the relay. In that case, then you know what? Next time if someone guy, some guy runs into you, you should just hit him with the throw because that's what you can do, right? I mean, I don't get that. What, what, what a stupid argument and a, and a really kind of petty-ass move by Jeff McNeil here. I know Mets fans, oh, Ruben Dada, but who cares? Find a second baseman who can take it, okay? Uh, in the end, Milwaukee won 3-1 to over 
the Metropolitans. Moving on to game two of this series. The Brewers, they struck first thanks to a Willie Adamas double and a Reese Hoskins two RBI single to give them a three to nothing lead. Now in the second, Francisco Alvarez, he cracked his first home run of the year to cut Milwaukee's lead down to two runs. A half inning later, Hoskins came through again as he homeward to left field, giving the Brewers a five to one lead. However, the Mets made it interesting in the eighth as Brett Beatty drove in three runs, setting an off-speed pitch over the wall in right center field. It was 7-5 following that shot. Now Big Meat Pete, he gave the Met faithful a little bit of hope in the bottom of the ninth as he cracked his first dinger of the season to left field with one out in the ninth inning. Now unfortunately for New Yorkers, the next two batters, DJ Stewart and Starling Marte, struck out, giving Milwaukee their second win of 2024 by the score of seven to six. Now my team, the Tigers, they faced off against the White Sox on the south side and the dark horse Cy Young Award candidate Tariq Skubal. He was on the bump for the Bengals. Uh, he matched up against the south sider Garrett Crochet. Now both guys, they were fantastic and each man worked six innings, giving up five hits or less between the two lefties with only one run scored between the two as well. Now both guys had their fastballs and sliders working in this one. A Scooble had an electric fastball that reached about 98 miles an hour, which tied up hitters from the right side, not to mention he utilized his slider against both lefties and righties in this game. Crochet, on the other hand, did much of the same. However, it seemed that unlike Scooble, Crochet went to his slider more often. In fact, Three of the eight strikeouts Crochet recorded came off of his slider in this contest, while three of the six strikeouts Scuba recorded came on his fastball. A true old-school matchup of two great southpaws in this one. I mean, Tariq Scuba, I think, is the next Randy Johnson. Call me crazy. I think he, he has that type of stuff. He's that type of guy. He has that type of presence on the mound. I'm really excited to see what he does in 24 for the Tigers. Now, the only run in the game came after Andy Abanez hit a sack fly to center field. That scored Javier Baez from third base. The Tigers came out victorious over the White Sox by that score of 1-0 in game number one. In game two, Detroit got out to an early 3-0 lead, thanks in part to a Mark Canna 2-RBI single in the first. However, that 3 to nothing lead did not last long as Luis Robert hit a two-run shot to center. Then an inning later, Chicago tied it up at three after a Brandon Shoemake home run to right field left the yard. Now an inning later, Chicago would take the lead after another Luis Robert home run. That was his second of the game. It was 5-3 to three White Sox after just three innings of play. Now the Tigers, they tie things up at six following a Riley Green home run to center field and a Carson Kelly RBI single to center field, which both came in the seventh inning. Now the catcher Carson Kelly would come through yet again for Detroit via another RBI single to center field that was pretty much a carbon copy of what he did just a few innings earlier. That RBI single gave Detroit a 7-6 lead, which they did not relinquish as they won the ball game by that score. Now heading down to Houston, the Yankees took care of business in the first two games. However, it was not without some challenges, as in game number one, the Astros got out to an early lead after a Chaz McCormick two RBI single and another RBI single from Yonder Diaz. This gave Houston an early 3-0 lead. However, New York battled their way back as Soto collected his first Yankee RBI following a sharp line drive to right. Then a Rizzo hit by pitch and a Volpe walk gave New York their second and third runs of the contest. Then finally the Yankees broke through in the seventh and eighth inning after Oswald Cabrera hit a dinger to right center field and Alex Verdugo hit a sack fly. New York would win the ball game by the score of 5-4 to four over the Astros. Now game number two, it was kind of the same story as Houston got out to an early 1-0 lead in the first. But New York squeezed through in the seventh time the game via a Cabrera single, and they took the lead after a Soto bases loaded walk. Now Cabrera collected his third RBI of the day after a single to center drove home Volpe and Wells. And finally, Stanton put the cherry on top for the Yankees in game number two as he sent a piss missile into the Crawford boxes in left field. The Yankees won the game by the score of 7-1. to one.